Before I get on with this week's little nugget of knowledge, I feel I should address some backlash that I received for last week's lesson on husbanding. And there was one comment in particular that was sent to me that really caught my attention and uh, I found quite disturbing. So it's something I wasn't happy to just let go and I think it needs some kind of response. So I will put the message on screen now, but I have a feeling this message was written in Scottish. So for all normal English speaking people out there, I will also translate. Fuck your advice. I just said, hey dog breath, what's shit for lunch? And I've booked a holiday. She stormed out. Now, this worries me. Uh, and I do sympathise with the individual that is living like this and treating his wife like this, but not as much as I actually sympathise with his wife. Um, I think this person is beyond help in terms of teaching him the art of husbanding, but it may be that we can benefit their relationship by teaching him some other skill that might make him more attractive. So that leads me on to today's lesson. So I hope you are watching this, Mr. And you can take on board what I'm about to teach you maybe bring some more happiness into your life, which will mean you can project that happiness into your wife's life. Today's lesson, Marcus Neil teaches vlogging. So how do you become a successful YouTuber? Well, this is quite a complex tutorial, so I've actually taken some notes this time and I will try and go through the stages in order of importance. But the first thing you need to have in your mind is being a YouTube phenomena does not come overnight. It's not something that just happens instantly. I didn't get to 59 subscribers by just throwing something together. This is a very carefully considered structured plan that I've been working on for a long time now. And as you can see, my numbers have skyrocketed um, over 50. So please do take all of this on board. Don't ignore any of the elements because they are essentially as important as, it, as each other. But I'll go through the ones which I think are most crucial in order. So the first thing is, you've probably heard this loads of times, but everybody will say to create successful content, you first need a story, a message. You need to have something that you want to be telling the world. And um, what I found is I don't often have that message. So what I do instead is make a video about how to be a YouTuber. And that fills the gap. So every three or four videos, if you're struggling for a message, just make another video about how you became successful on YouTube and what you do, because everybody does that. Next up, and this relates directly to questions I get asked all the time. I think I've had literally four emails about this. Does the equipment you use matter? And my answer is categorically, if you look like a YouTuber, you feel like a YouTuber. Ignore anyone that says you don't need an expensive camera, you don't need a lighting rig, you don't need expensive editing software. That's nonsense because you won't look like a YouTuber and no one will take you seriously. But if you want to get to the heights that I've got to, you need to invest and that means time and money. So buy yourself an expensive mirrorless full frame or di di digital DSLR camera with a big lens, massive fluffy mic muff on the top, all the equipment and you'll feel like a YouTuber and you will make, get, make much better content. Simple as that. But with all that said, if you're out and about, you've not got your best gear with you, just use your phone. As long as it's an iPhone 8 Plus or later, because, well, you know. Oh, and get yourself a cool whip. Inspiration. Where does your inspiration come from? That's another question I've been asked before. I watch a lot of YouTube, and I do take inspiration from other famous YouTubers. And I don't see it as copying. But always remember, be yourself. You are the only one, you are the only one that can be the, you are the best you there can be. That, 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 so that's this week, that, that could be this week's message actually, that's really good. So it's absolutely fine to take inspiration from other YouTubers, as long as you don't copy them directly. Everybody's watching the channel for you. They don't wanna watch a cheap copy of somebody else. There's no better Marcus Neil than Marcus Neil. Simple, create your own style, be your own person, be inspired by but don't copy. What you wear is really important to how you communicate with and build a relationship with your fans, your viewers. Ideally, start your own line of merch. Like this, it's okay, I'm just vlogging t-shirt. Link below. 
Learn to skateboard. How you edit your video is as important as the content itself. Editing is everything. If you've done the first step and bought all the right equipment and the right editing software, then you have all these tools to play with. Don't be afraid to play with them. Use all of them, they're there. There's no point in having them if you're not gonna use them. Effects, everything you've got, chuck it in there, make the most of it. All you're gonna do is make your production look more professional with the more effects and the more editing tricks you throw at it. Drone shots. Everyone loves a drone shot. Even better, drone shot of you on your skateboard having learnt how to skateboard. Slow motion. These things are all called B-roll, I've just recently learned. Do slow motion shots of things you think people want to see, whether they have anything to do with your video or not. Learn to like coffee. Coffee seems to play a really important role in the life of a vlogger, mainly because it gives you an opportunity to make B-roll like this. There's a very well-known saying that I made up that goes something like this. You don't need to burn to give warmth to others. Now, how does that apply to YouTube? sharing and more specifically collaborating don't be afraid to collaborate with less fortunate youtubers or less successful youtubers than yourself don't see them piggybacking off your success as a negative on you you're not going to lose subscribers just because you've gifted them subscribers and the sense of satisfaction of helping the less fortunate is something that will stay with you for a long time like this guy this guy runs a channel called what's up on wkg it's, it was a two-bit, tiny little cycling channel. And thanks to collaborating with me and my help in, in getting him noticed, it has now become the go-to place for all things cycling and bike related. Fashion, style, technology, racecraft, nutrition, training. Uh, it's not really my kind of thing, but it may be of interest to you. So I'll link below, go and check him out. Yeah, you can go. The language you use is very important. Remember, your YouTube channel is a means of communication with an audience. You want to build a relationship with these people and most YouTube viewers are as young as most YouTube vloggers. So try and get into the mind of your viewers. Use language that's relevant to them. I'm old school, so my slang consists of words like cool, wicked, dude, that kind of stuff. Don't be afraid to step out of your comfort zone and use fam, lit, bear, bra, um, sick, peak, stuff like that. I'll do, I'm gonna do a whole other video on uh, urban vocabulary, which will be kind of a tie in with this video. And I suggest that you watch that one as well because it's a very, um, very useful accompanying skill. So once you've got your video made, using all the tips I've already just told you, you want to get it noticed on YouTube. And the best way you can do that is by using a title that is in full block capitals and contains keywords that will catch interest. And do the same with a thumbnail. Bright colored thumbnail, big letters with keywords that will make people watch it. As long as it's got some kind of relevance to what you're actually talking about in the video, I don't see that as clickbait personally. Some people might disagree with me, but it's, it's a hard sell game. Uh, I think you've got to do it. So block capitals, it's like this video, I could call um, how I became a YouTube legend. Might seem a little bit clickbaity, but there's relevance, so it's not. And then maybe a picture of me with um, a YouTube award and some money. So you use that to get attention to your video in the first place. Doesn't matter how good your film is if nobody notices it. Make sure you put all the hashtags in there, bang in hashtags, everything you can think of. Uh, um, things that will grab attention are like comedy, nudity, um, Trump, anything that's current, put it in there. No one knows it, no, no one can even see that. So just put it in there anyway. So, that, um, so there you go. You have a video made, you've edited it using all the effects. You've been skateboarding, you've got a nice drone shot, you've got a slow motion of you drinking your coffee, you're wearing this t-shirt. The final step 
And I think this one is really important. Don't let the fame go to your head. Now, I've been very conscious that since getting this many subscribers, I might get noticed when I'm out and about on the street. Um, if, it's hard not to feel a little bit superior, but just try and resist that urge. The people watching you, they're people too. Slightly less fortunate people, slightly maybe less attractive people, less interesting people, but they are people. So don't forget them straight away. You know, once, you, once you've been famous for a few years, inevitably a few of them are gonna drop off your radar. But just try and remember the little people for as long as you can. That humility will come across in your videos and will probably bring in more friends to replace the ones that you've, you've sort of ignored anyway. Um, but yeah, so just try and hold on to that little bit of your, your roots, where you came from and why you started doing this in the first place. Uh, so once again, I'm very happy to, um, to help. Uh, I hope this is of use to many, many of you and in particular Mr so that he can apply these skills, make himself a more rounded, happy, attractive individual. And um, it's kind of a double lesson because this could potentially repair his marriage as well. One final tip, and this is super important. Always, always end your videos like this.